today we talk about running a straight bead with 7018 because it really is that easy. If you've been welding for five, 10 years, this video is not for you. You probably got all those welding skills figured out. But if you're just picking up stick welding for the first time, this is probably a good, helpful video. Now, that being said, you probably have a good concept at least about arc length travel speed, work angle, travel angle, amperage, all these things that need to happen in order to make a good weld. If you haven't figured these out, go check out this video by Bob Moffat we did five years ago, Welding 101. That's gonna get your stick welding lined out enough to figure out why we're not welding in straight lines. I got three things that you need to be thinking about in order to make these beads lined out perfectly straight. So one of the first golden rules in all welding, that's all welding processes, is, is following your ABCs, which means always be comfortable now while this is a great golden rule you're not always going to be comfortable and sitting in a chair while stick welding just isn't you the usual mo not to say that you won't be sitting in a chair while you're stick welding but also no sparks can land in your lap now now you just got just got a whole nother problem you should get used to working and standing on your feet we're not doing any high frequency tig or bench welding so we needed to get the habit of staying on our feet so just go ahead and get positioned where you're comfortable and then we want to kind of get our plate our scrap piece of metal that we're going to be running our beads on today to just try to practice these straight runs i like to always work towards myself if i can see where i'm going now mind you i'm carrying this drag angle while i'm doing it because i do want to have that 10 to 15 degree drag with the 7018 rod, I like to see where I'm going. If you find yourself on the back side of your rod, that's not a problem. You can still kind of peek around and look around to see, and you should be watching the front edge of that puddle most of the time anyway, but just getting started, it's easy to just start working towards yourself. That being said, you wanna do a couple dry runs as you start working towards yourself to see if you're actually gonna be comfortable. I always tell folks that you wanna get comfortable for where you're gonna stop, not for where you're gonna start. Now I've got my sprinter turned off right now, so I'm not gonna strike an arc on this material. I wanna practice lighting up here. I'm gonna be working my way down this plate and seeing if I can make it here. The only problem with this right now is that this rod isn't burning. So it's not giving me a good uh, eye of what's actually gonna be happening. So if I hung it off the edge here and I wanted to, ooh, this is even more comfortable. I got this table to lean on. I got a lot, I mean, I'm just chilling at this point. I can see that front edge, I can light up, and as that rod burns, I want you guys to notice one big thing. My hands did nothing but just drop. All I've done is practice my dry run. I wanna finish here with almost no rod, so I'm gonna strike up, and then I'm gonna use the edge of this plate as kind of a guide to see where that rod and how my angle's gonna end up, where my head's gonna end up. Always plan for where you're gonna finish, not where you're starting. Always get comfortable where you're gonna finish, not where you're starting. Just knowing where that rod's gonna finish is gonna help give us a better idea of being comfortable and where we need to sit. Let's give this plate a quick jimmy, fire up the machine, get it set up, and then we can run some welds. So we know that you're comfortable now. We wanna make sure you're still comfortable with some of the equipment. Today we're gonna to be using the Lincoln Sprinter 180SI. This is a newer little machine. I was super pumped when I saw Lincoln came out with it. This isn't just anything but excitement for me because it's so lightweight with high frequency TIG, lift arc TIG, pulse mode, 6010, 7018. For a thousand bucks, man, this is a really cool little unit to uh, tote around with. Of course, we got the ever so smooth and ever so low hydrogen Excalibur 187018s. We've got this machine set for stick as a 6010 mode, but we're running about 125 amps. Got our electrode plugged into the positive because that's how we should be running it. The second thing that I'm gonna ask if you're still having a hard time welding in a straight line is uh, can you even see? Repeat it after me. You can't weld what you can't see. So let's take a look in the hood. So the first thing that I'm gonna look at when I pop off your hood are your clear lenses. How bad are those clear lenses? Believe it or not, I've had some students never replace them or never even put them on there and just ruin the ADF on the inside. There's two. This is gonna get scuzzy on the inside and this is gonna get pretty scuzzy. Whenever I welded every single day, I changed those out almost every single day, especially when the company man provided them. I changed out clear lenses all the time. But we take a look on the inside. This hood is pretty technical. This is the 3350 ADV series. Uh, this one's the advanced. So it has your modes like grind, cut, and weld mode. So you can set your shade appropriately if your shade is too dark it might be harder for you to see or maybe you had it too low and you're on like grind mode 
or you're on cut mode and it's just too bright. The sensitivity is how sensitive those these sensors are to the actual light itself. It can get annoying if you're working around it and it's just constantly blinking on you so you can turn your sensitivity down. And then the delay, depending on how hot you're running, the delay is nice because it'll slow down how bright it comes back if you're working at something with higher amperages. This hood's cool because it does have a auto mode. It has a plus or minus of two or one or one and a half, depending on how much you want as far as a up or down so that if you're welding, cutting or grinding and you put it in auto mode, it'll adjust with a variable of one or two or whatever you set it to. Now these clear lenses aren't too bad, but we're gonna go ahead and swap them out. So we just pop those out. This one is one of the easiest ADFs that's, there is to remove all this crap. And you can pull that one out, give it a little bit of a fold, put that clear lens back in. The trickiest part is not to leave a fingerprint on none of it. And then you could pop out this guy here. To me, that's that's dirty. So if you y'all's is looking any dirtier than that, I mean, honestly, it is worth changing. Go ahead and get you a bunch of clear lenses, stock up on them, save them, whatever. Peel that both sides back. I've had students not peel back both sides of the plastic. We'll stick that back in there. And then again, you just kind of push this in the top. It's probably, again, one of the easier ones to install. Once it grabs, you can push down, push those out. The one thing that's really cool about this newer one is it actually has this light. If you're working in a, a dark spot, that'll help, help you see a little bit. You can't weld what you can't see, and I've even come to find out some students that I've taught just needed prescription glasses. So it might be the case that you need prescription glasses, or you just need a really solid hood. I don't care who you are, new clear lens day is magical. I feel like I can see just 10 times better even though mine wasn't even that bad. I can see clearly now the spatter is gone. Sorry, I won't do that to y'all. Well, we're nice and comfortable. Our lenses are clean. I can see just fine, but I still am getting a little bit not of a straight line. You might think, hey man, that's pretty, those are some pretty straight beads. But if we put a square on it, the evidence is there that my overlap towards the back of this weld is a little bit wider than the overlap at the beginning. This could be me being a, having a either tighter overlap here than here, or maybe I'm going slower towards the back than I am the front. How do we correct this? So you can use a couple tools. This we could bring out the old soapstone. Golly, this one's not sharp. Hold your breath, because it's not the great stuff to breathe. We get the old soapstone here, nice and sharp, and we just start making a, us a new line, a nice straight one, okay? Now when I say this is the line to follow, I want you to follow this with the toe of your weld. Believe it or not, this flat plate is a little more difficult than working inside a bevel, inside, uh, in my opinion, because those bevels are lines that we can follow. We could try to compensate here by overlapping a little less at the beginning and then trying to overlap a little heavier here to correct this, or we just weld that perfectly straight new bead and we're gonna leave a valley. What I'm gonna end up doing is we're gonna just overlap this side a little less and over overlap this a little bit more so that we can line out that bead. It helps with that little line of chalk so you have something to follow. I would say with stick welding, soapstone is a really great uh, choice. You could also use a silver streak, but as that plate gets hot, this tends to melt really easily. Or you can use a scribe. Scribes put really nice marks on uh, material as well. It's just a really thin line to follow. So if you could see it, you could see it. Yeah. So we're really going to try to go toe to toe with this one instead of overlapping it too much. Using that soapstone guide to help me kind of stay where I need to be. Follow the line. Don't look at nothing else but the line. Starting to make sure we need that tighter overlap now.
And now I can actually see why I was doing that, being that I had this angle coming in at the start, that rod wanted to weld a little faster than as if I got here, my rod angle was more perpendicular to the plate and it slowed things down, gave me a different bead profile. See if that helped us line out a little bit more. Yeah, now we're getting lined back out. That's one way to correct it. And if you're still having a hard time seeing, then we get a cutoff wheel. Now a cutoff wheel might seem a little bit overkill, but it's gonna be the easiest thing to see under the hood when it comes to a mark. I've used this technique in the field where we had to grind caps off and we needed to make a new mark or a new line. It is something to do. If you can't see the toe of that weld really easy, get your soapstone. You don't even maybe need a soapstone because all you gotta do is take this cutoff wheel and grind into the toe of that weld. being very confident that you're only scoring that weld. You're not trying to cut into the material. We're only trying to make a mark and that is it. But now that we got that line in there, boy, is it really easy to see and follow. I've seen welders do this where they, they'll do this every single time. That little score mark makes things really easy to follow. You just don't want to make a real deep one because if it's too deep, you might end up getting lack of fusion under your weld. And during practice, that might not be an issue because you're not gonna ever see it, but if this thing got tested or ultrasound, x-ray, whatever it may be, that's gonna be an issue. So again, we're not cutting the material, we're just scoring it in order to make the straightest, cleanest line possible. And it's just a really good technique. The biggest issue with this is it takes time all these things to try to check yourself to make sure you can weld a straight line takes time. So does the practice it takes to see what you need to be looking at in order to weld it. Moral of the story here is you can't weld what you can't see. And if you're not comfortable, you don't have your body in the right spot, you can't see. If you don't have the right hood, the corrective lenses, or the right shade, you can't see. If you don't have a good line or guide to follow, you can't see. That's what it basically comes down to. And you know, once you get the hang of everything, you got a good line to follow, your lenses are clean, you're comfortable, you end up making some really nice welds and it just becomes second nature to just point at that already straight toe and get to going. This translates literally to every direction that you'll go with this process. What we're really looking to see is, is these valleys. We want to make sure that we have proper overlap just as we do any other process. This is going to really translate well when we're moving into fillet welds and groove welds. If we can get proper overlap on one layer, we can get them in every layer, but we got to work on that overlap, keeping everything straight, keeping things inside the lines, keeping in everything nice, clean, and tied in. This will translate to everything that you do with this process. The only things that you're gonna have to worry about next is when you move into the 2G, 3G, or overhead position, and even in pipe, where gravity is affecting you. I hope you guys took a lot of value out of this lesson today. The goal is welding straight lines with no valleys in between these welds and just keeping up the practice. We all could use it. It's not like riding a bike. If you don't use it, you lose it. We laid down some pretty good welds with this here Sprinter 180 SI, 1 8 70 18s, straight as an arrow. We'll see you on the next one.